This is the Humanitarian Entrepreneur Podcast. We bring you real stories from out-of-the-box thinkers and trailblazers enacting change across the globe. Through sharing stories of struggles and triumphs, we form a community of like-minded individuals collectively uplifting the world through thriving movements and businesses. Change being overworked and underpaid. Change whether you believe you can do what you love to do. Change the idea you cannot be successful working on what you are truly passionate about. Change how your passions are funded and how much impact they can actually have. Change what you think you deserve and what you think you can achieve. Now here is your host, Tiffany Zahara. Hello, everyone, and welcome or welcome back to the Humanitarian Entrepreneur Podcast. My guest today is Shelly Wilson. She is an author, intuitive medium, and conscious creator who is passionate about helping people wake up to their greatness. She supports others as they navigate their own journey into consciousness to experience aliveness. Shelly, thank you so much for being here today. Well, thank you, Tiffany. I'm looking forward to sharing a conscious conversation with you. Wonderful. So can you actually tell us a bit about your story, uh, maybe about your passion, how you were able to, or how you are able to shine your light and your evolution into the work that you're doing today? Yes. Well, thank you. And you know what I recognize first and foremost is that all of us are having our own human life experience. We're all here. And I, of course, am having my own human life experience as well. And I've always known things, always been sensitive to energies, but wasn't raised in an environment that was conducive of sharing this, of cultivating this. So my wake up wasn't until, of course, I was married and had children. And I just began wondering, is this all there is? Is this what life is all about? Because truly, Tiffany, it felt like I was going through the motions that I was just, you know, existing, so to speak. And that's when I realized, wait a second, this is my life to live and I better make the most of each and every day. And that is truly what I'm so passionate about is not only myself living, being present in every day to the best of my ability, but also encouraging others to do the same as well. Mm, I love that. So how do you define what our purpose is in this life? I know a lot of people do ask that. They ask, who am I? Why am I here? What am I supposed to be doing? What is my purpose? And I will tell you, first and foremost, your purpose is to have a human life experience as you, as this person that you are incarnated as for this lifetime. And I will tell you, Tiffany, I do believe in reincarnation. I do believe that we've lived before and will live again. And I know a lot of people really want to know, well, but I know that there's something more. And this is where I remind people, tap into your heart and your spirit and let it guide you and let your purpose be what you're passionate about. I'm glad that you talked about that inner guidance. How do we learn to trust the guidance that we receive? You know, those inner whispers that you just alluded to. Well, the first thing is to know, once again, we're human. And as you can tell, I remind people of that often. And the reality of it is, is our mind will tend to, you know, we have that self-talk, we analyze, we think, we overthink, and so on. And, you know, to me, this is just that reminder of really connecting more deeply to ourselves, listening to our heart, listening to our spirit. And we tend to do that by quieting our mind and letting our spirit speak. And this can be really even just whether we call it meditation or just having time and reflection or just having quiet time. But the idea is to really, once again, connect more deeply to ourselves. I love in your book how you talk about how meditation doesn't have to just look a certain way and that you use walking as a form of meditation. Can you maybe dispel some of those myths? And I know that you started to talk about this with the reflection and the quiet time, but I think that there's such an emphasis on meditation and this this vision of what meditation actually is. Can you really dive into that more for people? And that's a great question, Tiffany, because the thing is, is our perception and connotation is that meditation requires us to sit quietly for long periods of time. And for many people, they may find that quite challenging. You know, we do have responsibilities. We have a life to live. And so if we can just even recognize that being mindful, being present in whatever it is we're doing is actually very meditative. 
So for me, spending time outdoors, walking around, going for a walk, I like to meander around my property here in Oklahoma and literally look at the new blooms, look at you know what is happening around me. And to me, that is just creating that space to be able to receive inspiration, receive guidance. And when we get those nudges of do this, go there, do that, it's because we do have that space to receive. I think a lot of the times that we turn to distractions because we don't want to maybe hear what we're being guided towards or to feel what comes up, how do we navigate maybe the darker chatter or those feelings that we may be resistant to? And how do we, in a supportive way, work through that? Yes. And you know what I'm hearing in my own mind as you're speaking that is a lot of people begin questioning, am I good enough? You know, am I worthy of this? Is it possible that I fulfill my dreams? And it is many times things that may have been told to us, or it is our own perception of what we view around us. You know, with the advent of the Photoshop and filters and things like that, you know, people are seeing through a lens that has been edited in essence. And to me, this is really once again reminding ourselves of our truth, of who we are, of our authentic nature. And just once again, knowing that yes, we have had life experiences, we are conditioned, we have culture and beliefs. And sometimes we're having to maneuver through all of that of what doesn't serve us or where we're at at this time. And just once again, saying, but what is right for me? Who is right for me? And really embracing that. I'm glad that you brought up the filters in the Photoshop because for many times I have gone on my tangents and stood on my soapbox about social media and things along those lines because it's a disconnection from authenticity. And it's in that imperfection and really seeing our true humanness that we're able to connect. So can maybe you comment on what this is really doing to our society and how you may see this going if we continue to go on this path of this perfection, whatever perfection is supposed to be, because we all know it's an illusion. But if we're continuing to have this vision of everything has to look a certain way, I mean, what does that do to our human connection and our soul's evolution. Yes. Well, you know, I want to say something very bluntly, but I'm going to refrain. But it, in essence... Oh, no, it's okay because I'm very bluntly. <laughs> Sorry about that. It messes us up, you know, our minds. And as I said, I could go off on saying something, but the reality of it is too, is that, whoa, people are living many times in a convoluted reality of what we've been exposed to. And Tiffany, you know, the past couple of years have really affected us in many ways. To me, those people that are able to stay grounded and centered and strive for balance are going to navigate a bit easier through through the challenges. Yes, we're all challenged. And I'm one of those people. I do take selfies. I do post. I have never used a filter, but I will tell you if the lighting isn't good, whoa, you know, it can really not look well and I probably won't post it, but I will not use a filter. So it's one of those things. If we can just even recognize too that our emotions, how we feel, all of that is going to affect us mentally, physically, emotionally, and so on. You spoke about balance and I was having a conversation yesterday and it was around flexibility. And there's often this, how I was describing it, this was offline from the recording, but it's this need for control to feel safe. And can you maybe talk about going with the flow a little bit more and you know how we surrender into our lives? Maybe for example, becoming aware of fear rather than placing attachment to it so that we don't fear life in all its varying pitfalls and discomforts, but are open to fully experiencing all that life has to offer and all its varying lessons and having that fluidity and flexibility and what's being thrown at us. Yes, that is a great question once again, Tiffany. And you know, the thing is too, because we think of vibration, we think of energy and definitely heart love vibration is a higher vibration 
vibration. It's lighter and playful. And then we have the heavier, denser vibration that is the fear and the worry. And once again, we know that it has been very heavy for quite some time. And it's not something I need to identify because we're all aware of what we've been exposed to, what we've been experiencing, and so on. And the reality of it is also is, yes, we can go through life doing our best to be very present, knowing what we can control. And for everyone, I will tell you, you do have control of your thoughts and words and actions and emotions and perceptions and responses. But everything else is pretty much beyond your control. And once you realize that, it does help you to have that stronger foundation where you do feel safe. Now, recognizing too, it is important to know when there are hazards, when there are times it's like, whoa, this doesn't feel good. This doesn't feel safe. You know, to be mindful, aware, conscious is much better than being careful and worrisome. You spoke about love and how this is a higher vibration. How can we lead with love in our businesses, in the work that we're doing in the world? Yes. And to me, this is a reminder too, to connect more deeply to ourselves because why are we doing what we do? Are we doing it because we love it? Are we doing it because we want to make a difference? We want to help people. Are we doing this because this is a great source of revenue for us? And that's not good or bad. I want to recognize that. But the reality of it is, is when we know why we do what we do and we recognize that sometimes there may be challenges that we face, challenges that we have to have a solution to. This can really help us to know, once again, where our energy is at, what we're focused on, and the intention behind it. Can you also maybe talk about why it's important to have self-love and self-empowerment and how that's significant to our growth? Yes. And what we want to remember, once again, everything is energy. And I also like to say awareness is everything. So if we're at that space of love, feeling love, love for others, and we may be a bit challenged to love ourselves because we're looking at imperfections or we are comparing our life or what we look like to others. You know, if you can see that you are a beautiful, unique, miraculous creation, that there is absolutely no one else exactly like you, that, you know, why not shine? Why not make the most of it? And yeah, we all have different shapes and sizes and abilities and things like that. But if you can trust that on a soul level, you chose to be here as you are, well, why not shine? I want to go to the shining your light, but I think before that, I want to ask about being able to really trust ourselves. And, you know, we've all had our challenges in life. And sometimes that, and this is kind of where I was going with the, the darker chatter of just the, the stress around, well, I've made all these mistakes before. How can I trust myself to not make the same mistakes? Or I hear what you were saying about, am I good enough? Am I worthy enough? But then there's still the other negative chatter about just you know the emotions and maybe the mistakes and things along those lines. How do we start to really trust ourselves? And maybe even going back to that self-love, how do we love ourselves through the difficult times that we've had. And I don't want to say mistakes we've made because they're all lessons that we've learned. But how do we start to heal ourselves and empower ourselves to move on to doing the things that we're supposed to be doing in this world that are important? Yes. And what I appreciate, Tiffany, is that you did rephrase how you said that too, because, you know, I believe life is about choices that once again, we are human, we have free will. And we have the ability to create. And when we recognize, too, that sometimes what we perceive to be mistakes, because many times we look back in reflection and think about, whoa, what was I thinking? But if we can also say, maybe this was just exactly what I needed at this moment. This was an opportunity to learn and to grow. And what I like to recognize, too, is many times if we have repeating patterns, same type of situation, same type of relationship, they're very well maybe a life lesson for us 
to learn. This may even be past life stuff, karmic stuff. You know, that's a lot for some people to think about. But when we just pause for a moment and be the observer to our life and what we're experiencing and maybe say, you know, God, spirit, universe, whatever term resonates with us, say, help me to understand more about this experience. You know, what was the lesson? What did I need to learn? Why am I repeating it again? And I assure you that you will probably have a response very quickly in the form of a thought, a feeling, an impression, or so on. But it's important to have the mindfulness time because if you're not having that mindfulness time, you may not... Um, I typically liken it to a fog. You can't have light get in through the fog. So you can't have that inner voice penetrate that fog if you're just consumed by just the, the stress and the anxiety. And I think that you were calling it the denser vibration. So it's important to have that reflective time and that quiet time so that you're able to more easily hear those voices when they come up at a faster rate versus, again, I just always liken it to that fog, <laughs> if that makes sense. And then that's a perfect way to describe it. And what coming into my mind to share also is, you know, many times we are just going through life. Once again, we're functioning at our level of awareness on those five senses. And then when we begin to wake up and learn more, realize more, that's when we start looking more back in hindsight too. So to me, this is definitely a process. And Tiffany, I recognize too that we're always getting signs. We're always getting synchronicities, those messages coming forth for us. And sometimes it's a family member or a friend helping us to point things out. And if we're at a state of being that we're not receptive to it, it probably won't be something that we recognize in that moment. You know, but I do want to recognize people that are sensitive to energies. Many times they obviously feel all of the heaviness, even more so than those that may not be as sensitive. So they're running their life experiences through that filter also of what they're feeling from those around them. I'm glad you brought that up. So the audience being activists and change makers and really doing fantastic things in the world, but a lot of the times it's in spaces that are overwhelming. It's dealing with the darker sides of humanity. How for those who are on a more sensitive level, able to navigate the work that they truly are passionate about and believe that they're here to do, but how do you not get consumed and accumulate all these levels of vicarious trauma from the work that they're doing? Yes. And, you know, that's a great question once again. And I get that many people are here once again to help people, to heal people, to make the world a better place. And of course, it starts with themselves. And this to me is why it's so essential to practice what I call good energetic hygiene, where we're striving for balance and doing our best to be grounded and centered, clearing our energy and so on. You know, what I'm seeing in my mind is images of homeless people, people that have addictions, people that, you know, have no place to turn, even though there's resources, they just need that helping hand. And I know even for some people, it may be hard to understand life path, life lesson, things like that. But once again, I recognize that we're all here to learn and to grow. And so even opening our heart, having compassion, having understanding for other life circumstances will help us to grow also. What about those that are doing work that are let's say is a little more controversial and to the point where there are death threats coming in, even from government agencies, depending on where their activism is in the world. How do you stay strong and resolve to do what you're doing when there is that next level of challenge being presented to you? Yes. And I, I appreciate how you worded that. And you know, the thing is, is obviously, even when people feel threatened of those change makers, they tend to come back in force, whether it is death threats, harming others, words and things like that. And to me, this is where you have to really recognize how empowered you feel. If you really feel like this is your purpose, you want to make a difference. I don't want to say that people call bluff. But I feel that sometimes we are tested to just see how strong we are or how willing of a change that we want to make. Mm, Thank you for that. 
So, I mean, I guess this kind of goes to shining your light. So can you maybe explain the importance a little bit more about standing in our power and shining that light, especially during these difficult times when there are real threats against you, but by doing so, this gives us the permission or gives others rather the permission to do the same type of work. So you're not doing this by yourself. You're starting to really amplify a movement. Yes. And you know, I'm hearing to remind people there are power in numbers. And it just takes one person willing to say, this isn't right. Let's make a difference. Let's make a change. You know, what's coming to mind is the Me Too movement. You know, this is stuff that has been going on for decades, probably centuries. And, you know, it took just one person and then another person and another person. And now it's bringing things to awareness. And when we think of standing in our power, shining our light, it is really focusing on being centered, being balanced, and just knowing that, yes, you may be vulnerable, you may feel weak, but you can still be very powerful. And the more that you recognize too, you know, tuning into your intuition, tuning into your gut, if things don't feel right, you know, what keeps coming in is, of course, do your best to never be in a situation that may be hazardous. But at the same time, if you're feeling threatened and so on, alert people, notify authorities. And we know sometimes that isn't helpful, but this is where documenting, sharing with others, keeping records, whatever it may be, this is just helping others to know what's going on. So don't feel like you have to approach things alone. At the same time, knowing too your own energy, your own intent and everything else. To go back to what you were saying about the centered and balanced, can you talk about the importance of play for everyone out there? <laughs> yes. So as part of striving for balance, it is knowing that, you know, yes, we may have work to do. You know, we are on a mission. We have change that we want to create. But at the same time, you need to devote play time. You need to balance life out with as you work, play, as you give, receive, as you take time for others, take time for yourself. And of course, we don't have to equate any type of ratio to that. But the idea as you do this, do that as well. Mm, absolutely. Especially the receiving part, because I think that a lot of people have issues around receiving, especially in this space. We want to give, we want to help, we want to heal. But then there's that forgetting that we need to receive too, that it's a continuum. It's a circle. It is. Speak to that, like the importance of really owning that receiving and not having guilt or shame attached to it, that this is part of the cycle. It is part of the cycle. And the reality of it is, is when you receive, you allow someone to give to you and opportunities show up. And to me, for many of us as well, it may be hard because it's like, no, let me take care of it. Let me pay for this. Let me do this. But also, I assure you that the more that you are open and receptive to those blessings coming your way, it just balances things out. Think of it as the law of giving and receiving, which is a universal law. And it just helps things to stay in that balance. Think of equilibrium. Absolutely. Shelly, thank you so much for being here today. All of the books that you've written will be linked in the show notes and all the ways of contacting you and following you and really just supporting your work will all be in the show notes for everyone. Yes. Thank you so much, Tiffany. Thank you for listening to the Humanitarian Entrepreneur Podcast. I hope you feel inspired by today's guest to find and lead with what makes you stand out and to take your own action in the world. Visit us at humanitarian-entrepreneur.com for the latest inspiring content and ways we can help drive change in your business or nonprofit.